Hello, everyone, and welcome to Above the Break. I'm Michael, and with me, as always, is Gary. How are you doing today, Gary? Hey, man, I'm doing good. Fun draft stuff last night, so I'm ready to get the ball rolling right now. 100%, and let's jump right into it. We got six solid picks for you guys. Uh, most of these guys landed in the lottery, and we're going to give these awards out uh, based on teams that made the right fit for their team and didn't think too much about it. And the first one, obviously, is the most controversial player in this draft. It's LaMelo Ball. I think he picks up a little bit too much flack from the media in terms of the circus that's been following him since he's been 14 or so. Um, the six foot seven, almost six foot eight talent is now joining the Charlotte Hornets uh, as owner Michael Jordan um, goes and selects him. Uh, what are some of your thoughts as, a, as he actually went from a projected first pick to going third to the Hornets? I think this is an amazing thing for him. I think when, when you think about the teams as the Timberwolves and the Warriors, they already have ball-dominant people with Carl Anthony Towns and D'Angelo Russell on the Timberwolves, and then Klay Thompson, Steph Curry, and Draymond Green on the Warriors. I think if you're LaMelo Ball, you want to be that playmaker, you want to be that future star for a team, Charlotte's is an amazing place for him. You know, they, all, they have Devontae the Graham and Terry Rozier, which they're going to have to figure out. But I think if you're Charlotte Hornets, you want people in your seats and you want exciting young future ahead of you, you got to put the ball in the metal ball hand. And, you know, he does magic with it. You know what I mean? He started out high media in high school, so the pressure is not going to even get to him. He's always been in that space through pretty much his whole basketball career. So, I mean, I'm excited for him in Charlotte. 100%. And I agree with you with everything you just said. Like, I mean, I think that, People were talking about, oh, this guy has one of the highest, like, boom or bust potentials. And to me, I don't see where the bust is. That's one of my biggest things that I have an issue with, this narrative that's going on about LaMelo. Where, where's the bust potential? Like, if you're going to go and tell me that this guy is going to be able to go and become someone like, a, you know, a Jason Kidd or do it, is that a bust? Like, look at his playmaking ability. There's not any sign that tells you that this guy's not going to be a serviceable starter in this league at, for, at, at any stretch. You know, so it's hard for me to look at LaMelo Ball and not see that as a value pick, honestly, at three. Um, the Warriors, obviously, with that injury to Klay Thompson, they could have maybe thought about make, take, maybe taking a guard or something to fill that void, but they took Nico Mannion later in the draft. Uh, that's an honorable little mention right there. But we'll move on to our next big value pick, and that would be no one other than Onyeka Okongwu, who joins the Atlanta Hawks roster. Uh, tell me a little bit about this guy who has had some comps to uh, Bam Adebayo and the fit that he'll have in that front court alongside John Collins, at least looking forward into the future. Yeah, this is a, an exciting young player. He could play power forward or center, but as you say, he's going to be playing with John Collins for the future. Uh, this guy is pretty much a shot blocker. He's, he's a, like a rim runner, all those kind of traits, and especially playing with a guy like Trey Young. This guy's going to be exciting to watch. Honestly, I'm happy for the Hawks. They picked a guy that's just a great fit for them. Um, of course, they're going to have to figure out this year with uh, having John Collins, Clint Capella, and Okongwu. But I feel like this player is just – like when they got that pick and when they had their selection in the draft, this is just something that they had to pick up. Like, they, they can't leave this guy on the board. So, I'm excited for them as well. 100% it's a must take. Uh, they got him uh, over there at the uh, sixth pick overall. Got to love the value that they get there um, out of the guy who they, they said, oh, he has a toe injury. Forget about it. It's fine. He's going to come in. He's going to be a real serviceable guy coming in there and playing and anchoring a 27th overall ranked defense from the Atlanta Hawks much needed uh, uh, presence underneath the rim for some int intimidation and some uh, shot blocking and shot altering, most importantly. Uh, the next guy that we have here that we want to talk about is uh, Devin Vassell. Devin Vassell actually goes 11th to the Spurs. Um, I absolutely in love with this guy. If you can see the last video, you can see how I was at a loss for words. I couldn't think of a better place for this product to end up in Going and uh, learning under the tutelage of Pop, you can't think of anything much better than that. The defensive stalwart, um, his teammate Patrick Williams going at fourth overall to the Bulls. But I think that the Spurs might have landed themselves a real steal of the draft in terms of a 3 and D with potential to develop. I'm not going to say Kawhi Leonard quite yet, but he does have that potential coming in as the same type of raw talent. What are your thoughts on the Spurs landing uh, Devin Vassell? 
I mean, Vassell is pretty much a, it's a fan favorite here on the podcast. So, I mean, at once seeing his game, you know, that three and D raw player, but when you look at his highlights, he, he seems more active and he seems more excited when he plays on the defensive end. And like you were saying, a good comparison to Kawhi Leonard, you know, he loves playing that defense and nice three point shot, be able to be a rim runner, like all these lottery guys. So I feel like this is a great pickup for the Spurs, especially with the downhill season that they had, you know, I feel like, uh, in my opinion, DeMar DeRozan is on the go. Um, but that's a discussion for another time. I feel like Vassell is the future for them. The Spurs have been known to take guys like Tony Parker, Manu Ginobili, and just these random just people in the draft and develop them into amazing players. And Vassell is just one of those guys where he landed in a great situation. If I'm Vassell, I'm excited for the future, and I know there's no ceiling to my potential. Definitely fits the mold there in the Spurs. I'm sure Pop is uh, licking his chops, having some – uh, wing defense and 3 and D ability to replace that of Danny Green or Kawhi Leonard on his roster moving forward, uh, considering the guys DeJounte Murray and Derek White under the helm already. Uh, they also added Trey Jones. Don't forget about that value pick at 41. Amazing defender in the perimeter. Um, and then the next one we want to talk about is the guy who went just before him, one pick at 10 to the Phoenix Suns. It's Jalen Smith. Uh, he fits really well for this Phoenix Suns team moving forward. He's got a really good ability uh, to stretch the floor a little bit and to also pair that with some shot blocking and intimidation. Uh, you go and look at how that fits beside someone like DeAndre Ayton and how exciting that is with, with uh, Devin Booker, obviously, uh, Michael Bridges at the three, and of course, newly acquired Chris Paul. Uh, what are some of your thoughts here in the fit um, in that backcourt where he might start off backing up uh, DeAndre Ayton and might find himself entering as the four if he actually shoots well uh, a la Cam Johnson and might usurp him in the lineup? Well, the thing – this is an interesting one for the Suns because I felt like – I like for my opinion and I felt like other people felt the same way as well. When they got Chris Paul, you start thinking, oh, where could they have gone? As we've seen here, Halliburton fell in the, dra in the draft. So before – they even got Chris Paul. I was thinking maybe they pick up Tyrese Halliburton and, and just fill that one spot for them. But after getting Chris Paul, I didn't really know where they were going to draft. Now, getting Jalen Smith is a big pickup for them because, again, out of their whole lineup, when it comes to defense, when it comes to offense, the four position is kind of where they're kind of lack, lacking. Cam Johnson's a great player, don't get me wrong, but he's just a shooter. He's not going to be your lockdown defender on any team. I feel like Jalen Smith's a great pickup here. Shoots decently well. Uh, there was a stat out there that he was a 65% free throw shooter, and he improved to be a 75% free throw shooter later on in right. his close career. So you can see the development there in the shooting. So you, you, you know that when you're picking up this kid, he puts in the effort, he puts in the work in his jump shot, and he will develop it in the NBA, in my opinion. Um, getting this guy as your foreman with an already stacked starting lineup and you just have more depth on the bench by putting Cam Johnson on the bench and potentially like this is a great pickup. And even if he plays on the bench, like this is just a great pickup for the Suns. And man, this, this Suns team is looking scary. It is. It really is looking really exciting. It's really going to be fun for the Valley boys down low. Um, now, obviously the next guy we're going to have up here, we're going to go with Kira Lewis jr. Landing with the new Orleans Pelicans. Replacing Drew Holiday's position in a way, uh, this guy loves transition. He's one of the fastest guys in the last four or five drafts. Um, what are some of your thoughts immediately in that fit with that up and down offense that New Orleans loves to uh, incorporate? Now, I do want to preface this first before – I'm not saying he'll play exactly like him. I won't say he will, will be as good as them. But I'm seeing a little comparison to De'Aaron Fox in this guy. Mm. Just being very fast, just going – straight down once he grabs the ball from that rebound just goes straight down to the next uh to the next rib and just starts dunking making an excellent pass he has a little bit of shooting he can be a shot creator here and there like i love this guy i feel like the pelicans got a steal with him in my opinion um losing drew holiday that you lose a little bit of defense but you have the shooting guard that can score for you for the future and pairing that for with eric bledsoe George Hill, Lonzo Ball, Zion Williamson, Jackson Hayes. There's the, the possibilities are endless with this team. You, they have so many ways they can go with each player. And I feel like Kira Luce is just there for the future to be their mandatory scorer. And this is a great pickup for the Pelicans. 
hundred percent. He's super fast, super fast twitch. He's going to be up and down that court. They love moving that ball quickly. Zion Williamson was one of the guys who thrives in transition. You get the speed of, uh, of Kira Lewis, who can also pass the ball. You got Alonzo Ball, who's super fast and super accurate with his passes and transition. Zion running the floor. Jackson Hayes is a rim running rim protector who can grab some rebounds and spark that fast break, giving it off to someone like Kira. It's just an amazing fit. Super excited for them. And I'm also equally as excited for Orlando picking up Cole Anthony at 15. That's a nice pickup for the Magic here. I know you're really high on him. No, I love Cole Anthony. I, I, I also want to say that I feel, again, like I don't think he'll play like him. However, I feel like Cole Anthony will be the Steph Curry of the draft in sense of that he's not going to play like Steph, but he's going to be an exciting player when it comes to just his dribbling style, his shooting, his all that. And Orlando, this is a great pickup for them because of the fact that with, when it comes to guards, they've been in the middle of nowhere when it comes to – they have Michael Carter – yeah, Michael Carr Williams and also Markel Falls there, but they're not really their typical playmaking guards for the future or just to start for them. I feel like Markel Falls is more of a shooting guard. We we've seen everyone's been saying that with when Philly drafted him, he's he's a, he's going to be a shooting guard. He's got he's more of a shot creator than a playmaker. Cole Anthony, of course, he is a shot uh, playmaker. He's also a shot creator as well. So I feel like. Cole Anthony is that type of player where, depending on the team he's on, he can adjust. And I, I'm very high on this guy, and I feel like if Orlando plays it right, this guy is going to be your guard for the future. 100%. Yeah, I agree with you 100% there. And I, I really love all of these positions that all of these players are in. From Okongwu, Vassell, Kira Lewis, Jalen Smith, Cole Anthony, and of course, LaMelo Ball, all of them landing on some really great opportunities to showcase who they are, um, operate their game on a higher level right now in the NBA and showcase that this is going to be one of the deeper drafts, especially considering how nice this lottery was. What do you guys think in the comment section? Let us know if you think there's anybody that you would like to add on the list. Uh, by all means, like and subscribe, obviously, if you're new. And we'll catch you in the next video where we're going to break down some news that's just been breaking here with Clay Thompson suffering a ruptured Achilles. We'll see you guys in that video. And uh, thanks for tuning in. It's been above the break.